A chicken egg is a single cell protected by a shell on the outside. A student puts three chicken eggs into dilute acid and leaves them for three days. The acid dissolves the eggshells, leaving the contents of the eggs surrounded by the cell membrane. The diagram shows the student's method. Okay, we have acid being poured onto the egg, the acid dissolves the egg, and now we just have the contents of the egg surrounded by a cell membrane. The student removes the eggs from the dilute acid and uses water to wash the surface acid away. The student then uses the eggs for this osmosis experiment. He measures the mass of each egg. He puts one egg into a beaker with distilled water, one egg into a beaker with 5% salt, and another egg into a beaker with 15% salt. After 15 minutes, he removes each egg from its beaker and measures its mass again. A. The bar graph shows the results obtained by the student from the osmosis experiment. Okay, we can see from the distilled water that the egg gained in mass in the 5% solution that it lost mass and in the 15% solution that it lost even more mass. 1. Name the, inter sorry, name the dependent variable in this experiment. Remember the dependent variable is the one which you measure and this in this particular experiment it will be the mass. 2. Explain the results for the egg placed in distilled water. Right, well what has happened here is that there is a higher concentration of water in the distilled water as opposed to inside the egg. Therefore the water moves from an area of high concentration, which is in the solution surrounding, um, to an area of low concentration, which is inside the egg. So actually for your two marks you're going to say that water moves into the egg from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Done. The student calculates the percentage change in mass of the eggs placed in the distilled water and in the 5% salt solution. Use the data from graph 1 to calculate the percentage change in mass for the egg placed in 15% salt solution. Show you're working. Okay, right, let's make sure we're looking at the right bit. Okay, we've got the 15% and we can see that the... Next question, question two. A student takes two strips from the epidermis of an onion and places one in distilled water and the other in concentrated salt solution. She then uses a camera to photograph a sample of these cells under a microscope. Cells in distilled water, cells in salt solution. We can see in the salt solution that the cell membrane has pulled away from the cell wall and in the cells, the cells in distilled water we can see that they're nice and turgid, which means they've swollen. A. Suggest why red onion is often used when carrying out this investigation. Uh, the reason is because it's easier to see because the cytoplasm is red. B part 1. The differences in the appearance of the plant cells are due to osmosis. Explain what is meant by the term osmosis. So simply write your definition of osmosis here, which is that it is the movement of water from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration um, through a partially permeable membrane. 2. Explain why the cells in distilled water look different when compared to the cells in salt solution. 4 marks. Okay, so you need to make sure you write a comparison here and talk about both the distilled water and salt solution cells. Right, let's start with the cells in the distilled water. The point here is that there is a higher concentration of water surrounding the cells than inside the cells. Therefore, water enters the cells by osmosis and the cell membrane pushes against the cell wall, causing it to become turgid. Now, if we look at the salt solution, we find that there is more water, higher concentration of water inside the cells compared with outside. So therefore, water leaves the cell the cell membrane pulls away from the cell wall and the cell is now flaccid or plasmalized. And if you use those keywords like flaccid, then that's worth a whole mark in its own right. If no red blood cells are placed in distilled, sorry, if red blood cells are placed in distilled water and examined under a microscope, no cells are seen. Explain why no red blood cells would be seen. Remember the crucial difference here is that animal cells have no cell wall. So the problem for the animal cell is that the water will move into the red blood cell and it will lead to the cell bursting um, due to the fact that it has no cell wall. A student prepared some plant cells taken from an onion. She placed the cells in a few drops of distilled water. She then used a camera attached to a microscope to photograph the cells. She then added a few drops of concentrated salt solution to the cells and waited for a few minutes. She took another photograph of the same cells. Describe the differences in the appearance of the cells in concentrated salt solution compared with the cells in distilled water. The key word here is describe, not explain, so you literally say what you see. So just look at the pictures and work out two major differences. Okay, the first thing I would say is that it sounds ridiculous, but the, the cells in the concentrated salt solution have a darker colour than those in the distilled water. That will definitely get you one mark. And then for the second mark, just say things like the cells in the concentrated salt solution are plasmalised, whereas the ones in the distilled water are not. 
if you don't like that because you can't remember the word plasmalized, you can just say that the cytoplasm has pulled, sorry, the membrane has pulled away from the cell wall in the concentrated salt solution where it has not done so in the distilled water. So yeah, lots of options there. So the student thought that the difference in the cells was caused by osmosis. What is meant by the term osmosis? Remember, this is the movement of water from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration through a partially permeable membrane. Explain what happened to the cells in concentrated salt solution to change their appearance. Right, what has happened here is there's a high concentration of water in the side of the cell compared with the surrounding solution. Therefore, water has left the cell um, and this has caused the cell membrane to shrink away from the cell wall leading to plasmolysis. Another student investigated the appearance of red blood cells in distilled water and in concentrated salt solution. Use your knowledge of, os of osmosis and the structure of red blood cells to describe and explain what the red blood cells would look like. Right, in the, pure, in the distilled water, what will happen is the red blood cells will burst. This is because water has entered the cell and the fact that there's no cell wall will lead to their bursting. Okay, now we're looking at in concentrated salt solution. Well, the opposite has happened this time. Water has left the cells and what will happen is these cells will become crenated if you're feeling fancy or just right, they become smaller or flaccid. Lots of options. You don't have to be overly specific here. Just use your common sense for these questions. Plant roots absorb water from the soil by, by osmosis. What is osmosis? Oh my God, how often do they ask this question? Again, it is the movement of water from an area of high water concentration to an area of low con water concentration across a partially permeable membrane. 3B. Figure 3 shows part of a plant root. Okay, hello, root hair cells. Root hairs, at least. The plant root is adapted for absorbing water from the soil. Use information from figure 3 to explain how this plant root is adapted for absorbing water. Right. Lovely question here. You need to say that there are many root hairs and what they do is provide a larger surface area to allow more osmosis of water into the root. And yeah, done. Three marks. Very nice question. Last question I'm going to take today is this one. Plants exchange substances with the environment. Plant roots absorb water mainly by osmosis. Plant roots absorb ions mainly by active transport. Explain why roots need to use the two different methods to absorb water and ions. Right, what we're going to say here is for water, there is more, a higher water concentration in the soil than inside the plant. Therefore, water can enter the root by osmosis from an area of higher concentration to an area of low concentration. However, in terms of ions, there are more ions inside the root compared within the soil. But the plant is greedy, it wants to absorb as many ions as possible, so it's going to use active transport to move the ions from the soil into the root, that requires energy because the ions are moved against the concentration gradient. Just to read you out the four marks, first of all, you could get the first mark for saying um, that the solution in the, the soil has a higher water concentration. Um, and then you could say for the second mark, so water moves from the soil into the root. And for the third mark, you could say that we're now talking about the ions, so we're saying that the ions move from a low concentration in the soil into the high concentration in the root, and then for the fourth mark, just say here that energy is needed to move those ions. I hope that made sense. 4b, what is meant by the term transpiration stream? Right, um, okay, again, this is a definition you just need to learn. This is the movement of water from the roots to the leaves. Um, via the xylem, remember that is a tube effectively that carries water, and that this water evaporates from the leaf via the stomata, remember that is transpiration. So yeah, for the first mark, just say movement of the water, second mark, via the xylem, third mark, into the leaves, and if you're feeling jazzy, add evaporates via the stomata. I hope you found these questions helpful. I mean, I'm making a real effort to go through lots of exam questions because I know you guys find that helpful. I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>